and we are live hi everyone nice to see you hi skulk how are you i'm very good how are you i'm doing well thanks i love the microphone it's so professional i think i need to get one myself um i'll give <laughs> I'll give everyone a few minutes to sign on. Um, I see we have some comments already. They're in Arabic, so I don't know how to read them. But thank you so much for your comments. Um, and Nadine is here also from South Africa. Nadine, where in South Africa are you from? Um, I can't remember. Um, we will get to Skulk in a minute. I just want to say a few things that everyone sign on and give you guys a few minutes to um, to get settled. But uh, just a few things about you all people. Well, first of all, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And just a few quick, quick, quick things about you all people. For those of you who don't know, we are an online tuition-free university. Um, we offer, uh, we are not, we do collect uh, small minimal fees to keep us up and running. If you're unable to make those payments, we, we do offer grants and scholarships um, to everyone so who applies. So let us know. Um, don't let that be a reason not to apply. Our mission at University of the People is to open the gates to higher education for everyone. So um, why don't our students let us know what you're studying and our applicants let us know where you're from so we can differentiate. I love seeing all the different degrees in there. Brandon is a health science student also. Thank you for tuning in. And um, I love seeing where everyone's from and what everyone's studying. We have Chris from Zambia. Very nice and Raluz from the UK. Okay, thanks guys for letting me know. Um, okay, so what else can I tell you about you all people? We are, um, sorry, we, ha we are online, like I said, so it gives you the flexibility to study anywhere, anytime. All you need is an internet connection. Um, and we have a very strong academic leadership team coming from the top universities around the world, um, UC Berkeley, Princeton, University of Edinburgh, just to name a few. And we do have 50,000 students studying with us from over 200 countries and territories. So um, because we have so many different students from all over the world, not all of them are proficient in English. If that's your situation, don't worry. We do offer an English composition course. OK, there we go. There's the dog. Um, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep going, going through it. Um, just ignore him. OK, shh. Or you're going to have to tone it down. Um, OK. So uh, if English is not your first language, don't worry. We offer English composition course to catch you up to speed. No problem. Okay, so if you're an applicant and you want to learn more about UO People, visit www.uopeople.edu or just click the link in the description of this bio to, uh, or the description of this event to head over to our application page. And you can always uh, message us with any questions. I encourage all of our viewers to ask questions on this platform, to engage with each other. That's why we're here. We're here to share Skulk's journey at UO People and before UO People. And so if you have any questions about health science, let us know. I'm sure Skulk will be happy to answer. Okay, so Skulk, this is, you are the main event. Let's go to you. Um, what, who, who are you? Where do you live? Why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I am Skog van Staden. I am 19 years old. I live in the beautiful city of Cape Town in South Africa. I'm a health science student at UO People with a dream of becoming a surgeon. Okay, that's a very, that's quite an ambitious goal. I love it. Um, maybe you could talk about how you decided uh, to become a surgeon or, you know, why you want to start that path. I have for the last two and a half years, um, I finished high school at 16 with my GED. So I had basically two and a half years to just explore different roles of employment, different industries. So I was in finance, film, retail, literally everything you could think of. And I couldn't find where I could see myself as a 65 year old man doing that job and then retiring until I actually during uh, our lockdown period here in South Africa because of COVID, um, 
I discovered, it's going to sound very cliche, but Grey's Anatomy. Um, and I felt so inspired and uh, about like how the show portrays what surgeons specifically do. And then I did a lot more research into what surgeons actually do, the qualifications needed and um, different things like that. And I just thought, you know, I think this is my thing. And then I just found your people after a very, very, very strenuous time of trying to find a place to do my undergrad degree, where I either the tuition was like forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, which we cannot afford possibly. Um, yeah. Where I can't get scholarships at any of the universities, um, where or I don't get into the universities. Like even my local university, I couldn't get in there because I have a GED. Right. Okay. You know, you. I feel like I need to connect you with Pragashni and her son. They also study at UO people, and they're South African. And she homeschooled her son as, excuse me, as well. And now they're both uh, studying at UO people. So I feel like oh. I need to connect you. Yeah, they have a cool story. We did a live with them like almost a year ago. I want to say. Um, okay. So. You have a really cool story. I love that you um, watched Grey's Anatomy and it kind of triggered, you know, or sparked, you know, that passion. Um, tell us how long you've been studying um, at UO People. This is now my second term um, of my first year. And how's it going so far? Um, the first term was a lot easier than this one. Um, I'm doing two biology courses, uh, one more chemistry based, and one more um, traditional biology based, and they are a lot tougher than I expected. Uh, but the lecturers are very helpful. If you message them, they explain stuff very in, in a lot of detail, and the coursework uh, in the learning guides and all, all that. It's, it's very easy to grasp a topic if you don't know it. Okay, wow. So um, I'm wondering if you could tell us um, a bit about your, you touched on it a little bit, but maybe you could go back and expand on some of the challenges that you faced it, that you faced in the past in uh, getting a higher education. So I applied to US universities across the, from Ivy League to um, community college, I applied in the UK, I applied at, at seven universities in South Africa, and I couldn't get into any of them because of my two main reasons were either I was not qualified, um, or I couldn't afford tuition, because tuition at most universities, they're crazy, uh, because it's obviously, it's, it's in person, the books and all that, like, and just strenuous fees. Um, and then after a very long time, I started looking into tuition free universities. And I found a few in Europe, specifically, uh, University of Berlin, uh, University of Munich, and all of them you need German to study. So it's obviously not really an option. Um, and then in a very late night Google search, I came across your people and I just randomly applied, didn't think I was going to get in here either. And then I was shocked with an email two months later that I got accepted. And here we are. Okay, I love this story. That's super cool. Um, and, and I also want to say Nadine also was homeschooled and she's in South Africa. She's in Johannesburg and she, okay. um, she got her GED also. So yeah, Nadine. Nadine's a, been on a live event also. So thanks, Nadine. Um, okay, so you have a super interesting story. Um, and why did you want to get um, to pursue higher education? I'm interested in why that was part of your, your path. Um, with the career paths I wanted to follow, uh, undergrad degrees and a lot, uh, a lot of the time graduate degrees are a requirement in that. And I also felt like it's, I would be one of the very, one of the only people in my entire family going back four or five generations to actually attend university. Um, the last, the only person who has a university degree in my entire family is my mom's cousin. Wow, 
Sorry, I'm muting my, there's some singing going on. I, I don't know if you can hear it, so I'm muting and coming back. Um, okay, well, congratulations on being first generation, um, you know, college student. That's super cool. I love these types of stories. Um, I'm sure your family is very proud of you. It's very exciting. Um, maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about your experience studying at you know, people. What's it like to interact with different peers? Um, you know, we have 50,000 students from all over the world. So, you know, what's it like interacting with different cultures? Um, what has your courses been like, course instructors? Maybe you could just give us a little overview on your overall experience with these types of UO people. Okay. Uh, so in the first term, you had the courses are assigned to you. Uh, one of the courses is um, online education strategies, which is extremely helpful, where they specifically go through um, time management skills, uh, respecting other cultures, how to interact with other cultures, uh, a topic called netiquette, which is online etiquette, um, how to specifically to be respectful if someone else has a different cultural opinion to yours or and that comes up, say, in one of the in, in interactive um, courses or assignments, um, then you know how to handle that and not start start fights. So I, I really appreciated that. Um, having learned that experience, um, what else can I say? I had to learn a lot of time management skills myself, um, that uh, self-discipline, sitting down, doing your coursework, because obviously studying from home, it's easy to just go, watch a movie on Netflix or watch a YouTube video or just go get some food or get out of bed late. And then end of the day, it's the last day of the, the this, uh, school week and none of your projects are done, which happened to me quite often in the first three weeks uh, where I had to sit to midnight and just submitting work. Uh, I did very bad in those, so don't do that. But um, now I can really say that I have learned a lot of skills. I've grown a lot um, by adjusting to this new type of environment, which is really cool uh, because normally you would not have to work on yourself and growing yourself um, when starting school. And what is your um, interaction with your course instructor has been like, and what do you think of the overall health science uh, degree program so far? My two course instructors um, in my first term, I love them, love them to bits. Uh, Professor Ingrid and Professor Hassan, uh, they were extremely helpful all the time, like within a day, less, maybe two hours. They would always respond to messages. They would always be helpful, always be willing to explain the topic to you or if you feel like a peer assessment was graded unfairly they would go back and regrade it if it was the, the need was there or they would explain to you why you got the grade you why i got the grade i did and then i could go work on that and adjust my study strategies uh to get better grades and i could actually see how my grades improved how the more i, I interacted with my course instructors um, but at the moment, uh, in the biology courses, I'm enjoying that a lot because with a lot of the assignments, we get to actually dive into diseases and, um, medicine, which I, we, I didn't do in the previous term. So I'm enjoying actually exploring that because that's in, end of the day where, where I want to be. Okay, I love that so much. So you're, that actually sounds really interesting to learn about different diseases. Um, and uh, interesting time to be a health science student because of COVID. Do you have any thoughts you want to share on, you know, the pandemic, maybe just what it's like in, in Cape Town in South Africa right now? I think it's a little bit better from my understanding. Um, but I'd be interested in your perspective as a health science student, you know, maybe your take on it. So in South Africa, uh, we've handled the case, uh, well, our cases quite well. Um, Africa as a continent has had, I think, 2% of the predicted deaths. Uh, so we've adhered to 
many of the safety protocols, uh, the lockdowns put in place by our president has been very effective in slowing down that spread. And after we had our major wave back in July, and currently we only have one hotspot. Uh, the rest of the places are, we mostly open, we free going, um, we just have a mask mandate, uh, which is a good and very, very good in my opinion. Uh, wearing a mask saves, li saves lives. Uh, we have hand sanitizer in shops. When you go in, you have to sanitize your hands. You can't go in, in any shops without wearing a mask. You can't go outside without wearing a mask. Uh, you get fined if you don't wear a mask uh, around 5,000 Rand, which is about $400. If you walk outside and a police officer sees you without a mask on, uh, social distancing is um, enforced in a lot of places. Big events are, you can't really uh, do big events. Our events are limited to 250 people. Doesn't matter how big your your building is, it's 250 people and that's that, which I feel is a very good thing because a lot of the places, the buildings are not specifically built to handle the type of airflow required uh, it's like they, they don't have industrial sized air conditioning systems to actually get the air out, which can carry those COVID particles. Um, because a lot of people, they take, take off their masks, talk to each other, and then those particles are in the air, and then that just stays there. So I think in South Africa, we've handled the cases quite well, and I, I'm quite proud of our government. Besides some of the other political stuff, I feel our government has done a great job. Okay, great. That's, it's really cool to hear from a health science student, you know, your perspective. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to shift it back a little bit to uh, your people and how, you know, we know that your people is 100% online, which gives our students the flexibility to st study according to their schedule. How has the flexibility helped you in your life? Um, the flexibility has been great. Uh, I work part-time as well. So being able to fully dedicate certain days to studying and putting in the work has been a great help. Um, not having those set times also creates a lot of free time for yourself and for doing other things besides school. So it's not, it doesn't take up that much time normal schooling does because you can really dictate when you have the time to study and when you have because you can dictate that time uh, you can really focus on your work because you can make sure that those times are uninterrupted okay I'm unmuting myself but my dog is barking so I apologize um what just out of curiosity what are your part-time jobs i am a part-time son engineer for my church i um basically on on thursdays and sundays i run the services band rehearsals i um maintain the system and and uh i'm head of the team as well okay that's super cool look at you sorry don't know what to do with um, okay, but we keep going. That's what we do. We keep going. Um, okay, so, all right, that's very interesting. Um, seems like you're very busy. Um, maybe just, uh, you know, one last question for you um, is, you know, in these times of COVID, a lot of people are transitioning to online education. What sort of um, tips would you uh would you give to those who are looking to transition to an online university like UO people? I would say apply as soon as you can, save your spot, um, especially at UO people, like slots fill up uh, quite fast. Um, I can highly recommend uh, UO people. I, I, I love my university. Um, but I would definitely say learn time management skills from the start, uh, put, put out an actual schedule for you Print, print it out, put it on your wall, make sure you stick to that schedule as much as you can. You won't always be able to, but having that time slotted specifically for studying helps a lot, especially at the start. So you don't have to learn that while needing to do projects, needing to do 
maybe you work full time. So I'd, I'd say that's my number one tip. Okay, great. That's really good advice. Um, so Skulk, any last final thoughts you want to give us on anything being a health science student, you owe people, your life, whatever you want. Any final thoughts? Um, if you're looking to study, apply now. Your people is fantastic. Highly recommended. Um, wear a mask when you go outside. Wash <laughs> your hands as much as you can. Sanitize if you can't. Um, and social distance. Oh, that's okay. That's good advice. That's a very good advice. Also, there was something you said that made me really think about um, uh, COVID. <laughs> Sorry is when you you said the particles uh like stay in the air is that that's what you said that really wow that was a, quite a visual i must say it's it's so true though um yeah. so thank you for putting it like that it's like you know it just makes things click a little bit i think i think it's a good visual for us yeah. um okay so Skull, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really a pleasure to have you on and you did a great job answering all of my questions. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being getting the opportunity. Yes, yeah, absolutely my pleasure. You're welcome anytime. Um, Okay, so thank you, Skulk, and thank you, our viewers, for tuning in. It's always, oh, look at Christy says, great story. I saw a few of those. Everyone likes your story. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I encourage, if you haven't applied to UO People yet, to do so. If you have any questions, you can email admissions at uopeople.edu. You can private message us here. You can leave a comment, you know, whatever. You can always, if you're a student and you have a question, you can email your advisor, um, your program advisor. They're very helpful. Um, oh, we got another great story. And um, you do have a great story, by the way. <laughs> and um, and I, I uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to apply, save your spot. And I include a link in the description of this event to do so. It's super easy. And any questions you can ask us. and. I think that's it. Tomorrow I have another, I'm interviewing another student. She's an MBA student. Her name is Andrea, and I'm really excited to interview her also. Um, oh, and Debula says she likes her program advisor. Thanks, Debula, for sharing. Um, yeah, I love our, we have really great program advisors. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch yesterday. I interviewed Kelly, um, another South African. Well, South Africans are dominating. Um, Kelly is our director of program advising, and she does a great job with her staff. So I'm, we're very fortunate to have Kelly and her team. Um, okay, so that's all I got for today. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time with Andrea, who's an MBA student. So we'll highlight the MBA degree. So this, all events are for students and applicants, students to, you know, hear other students' stories, to engage with each other, to interact, and um, applicants to hear, you know, what people's experiences are. So these are for everyone because we want to spread the UO people message. So anyways, Skulk, Again, thank you so much and have a great day and everyone stay safe and healthy and connected with UO people. Um, and we have a really cute Instagram takeover. Uh, so check out Instagram. Um, Japanese Nomad, I think is her name. Re, re, or Japanese Nomad, yes. Check out our Instagram page, it's so cute. And if anyone's interested in doing an Instagram takeover, let me know. Um, this is our first one that we're doing and I love it, it's so fun. So thank you guys so much, and I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.